Hello, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me backtrack a little bit, NBA really quick. You know, the Cavaliers, the team I picked for the series, were a big underdog. If you bet this early, you got the Cavaliers at odds of plus 180 and higher, plus 190, plus 200, especially after the Cavaliers went out and lost game one, a game I thought they had a chance of winning or at least covering, and which uh, fell apart literally in the last 10 seconds of regulation. That game went into overtime. Uh, the spread then delivered for the Warriors, and things fell apart if you were a Cavs supporter. But understand, you've now won the NBA Finals, right? Because today, after the Cavs now have taken a two games to one lead in that Finals, you can get the Warriors to win the series at minus 120. In other words, you can hedge and you're dealing with so much leverage because you got the Cavaliers at plus 190 at the start of the series that you can make money at this point. You can cash out right here and make money if either team wins the finals, right? In other words, you could have the Cavs at the plus 190 where you had them, right, where you locked in that price, and now you can get the Warriors at a minus 120 you can bet just enough on the Warriors. So if the Warriors win, you break even or make a small profit. And if the Cavs win, well, you make a profit. In my opinion, that's why you hedge. In my opinion, that's what gambling is all about. Let's talk boxing, okay? Now, some people have roughed me up on my Miguel Cotto, Daniel Gill post-fight video where I said that I would take Cotto over Saul Alvarez, right? So some people have pointed out that I've been fading Saul Alvarez for quite some time. As one person put it, you know, when is Dwyer going to stop losing on betting against Saul Alvarez? And I noticed that a bunch of people then approved of that comment. Now, you should view my opinion as just a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Right? I'm giving you my thoughts. I'm not giving you the public sentiment. Right? The public feels differently than I do. I understand I'm in the minority. I understand I'm swimming against the tide. That's fine. Right? In my opinion, in life, that's where you make your profits. Let's talk about my history with Saul Alvarez. Right? I'll say this. And keep in mind, all of these videos are still online. You can literally research my opinion by just putting my name in and then plugging in the names of the fighters and searching on YouTube. I took Austin Trout over Saul Alvarez. I did, right? I would argue that you need to go by what happened in the fight, not by the official decision. Now, I agree, as a gambler, really all that matters is the official decision. Right? If you're in the casino and you watch Lennox Lewis beat Evander Holofield and then they announce that fight as a draw, you know what? They're not going to give you your money. Right? Trust me, I know I had Lennox Lewis in that fight years ago. Right? You know, the cashier is going to tell you, look, you know, you lost the fight. Whoever you thought won, right, didn't officially. So I'll agree, the people who cash tickets at the end of the Saul Alvarez Austin Trout fight were the people who took Saul Alvarez. Right? He's the one who won the fight. But what I want you to do is to look at the fight, and I'll even concede, as I have to, that Saul Alvarez gets the one knockdown in that fight. He does. Austin Trout does hit the canvas. It's not a slip. Right? Trout gets hit, Trout gets hurt, Trout goes down. Right? You know, to me, Trout won that fight. If you think I'm a crackpot, and that's fair, um, look at the CompuBox numbers. 
Go back and watch that fight again. If you're a Canelo supporter, do you really feel that that fight went the way the public thought it would? Do you feel Canelo won that fight by a comfortable margin? If Austin Trout were to fight Canelo today, I'd take Austin Trout. Right? Understand the problems that Canelo has in terms of volume, in terms of handling a jab surfaced in that Austin Trout fight, right? I'll agree, I was on the wrong side of that play officially. In my opinion, the style showed themselves. I thought Austin Trout beat Canelo. I took Erislandi Lara over Canelo. Now we're going to argue about this fight till the cows come home. I thought the foot speed gap, and there's a noticeable foot speed gap in that fight, gave Lara the victory. Now, obviously, if you held a Lara ticket, the casino didn't pay you because officially Saul Alvarez won the fight. I'll even agree with those cynics who say, look, when the judges love a fighter, rightly or wrongly, you've got to factor that into your pre-fight analysis. In other words, if you know that a Ray Leonard, if he's close enough to a Marvin Hagler, is going to win the decision then you have to take that into consideration. I'll agree with that. And I also understand there are many of you who believe that Canelo beat Erislandi Lara. Right? From my seat, the foot speed gap that I thought would exist, existed. I thought Lara is getting off first. I thought Lara is getting off more often. I thought Lara is then getting out of the pocket. I thought Canelo looked flat-footed. I thought Canelo looked slow. I thought Canelo looked like he was the worst athlete in the ring. Right? I thought Canelo didn't hurt Lara appreciably. I didn't see Lara get hit by many hard shots. I thought Canelo got hit by several stinging shots. I thought the physical gap between the two men showed itself. I thought Lara won that fight. Now, I took Floyd over Canelo. I think we know that Floyd dominated that fight. Now, I'll agree Mayweather is, you know, the top shelf. But I will say this. There again, you saw a hand speed gap. Let me tell you, the hand speed gap is so profound that Floyd's on his front foot early in that fight, folks. He's coming forward and he knows he can touch Canelo and Canelo can't touch him, right? When Floyd starts moving a little bit later, moving away from the pocket, Canelo looks like he's in cement. He can't keep up. He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the reflexes, right? Canelo's a hard puncher because he's flat-footed. The cost of that is that he doesn't move as well as guys who could operate on the balls of their feet. Now, the James Kirkland fight, I took distance in that fight. I thought it was going to end early, right? I thought it was going to end inside of the distance. And it did, right? I, you know, I know people are going to say, hey, you thought Canelo would have a harder time in that fight. Well, let's just say the fight ended so early, it was never in danger of going the distance, was it? It was never in danger of even making it to the second half of the fight, Right? You know, so even a Canelo skeptic like me was able to collect after that fight. Now I'm taking Miguel Cotto over Canelo. Let me say this. I know, I understand, Cotto himself doesn't see himself as a middleweight. That's a tragedy. Because Miguel Cotto has proven himself to be absolutely lethal against bigger fighters. Understand, some of the guys at middleweight are noticeably slower than Miguel Cotto, right? And are upright. Miguel Cotto against Andy Lee, battle of great left hands. I'm just telling you, Miguel Cotto would move around the ring a lot better than Andy Lee. A lot better. Keep in mind, why am I picking on Andy Lee? He has a title at middleweight. Right? We're going to pick on the guys with titles at middleweight. Understand, Cotto 
has a speed advantage. Kodo fights small. Even though he's the smaller man in the ring, he has the height advantage. Because Kodo knows how to deal with bigger men better than Andy Lee knows how to deal with smaller men. Right? The height advantage goes to the guy who can handle the height difference better. That's Miguel Cotto. Not only that, Miguel Cotto can lead with power shots. Right? He has timing down. So Cotto can be away from Andy Lee, then would be able to jump in with a left hook. Right? And stun him. Why do I know that? Just think about the fights Cotto's had at middleweight. Sergio Martinez was surprised by Cotto's suddenness. Daniel Gill was surprised by Cotto's suddenness. Understand, Martinez and Gill are hard to hit. Right? Cotto hits them flush. You know, it's not the size of the man in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the man. Kodo's ability to fight small and his punch, which carries to middleweight, make him a force at middleweight. Understand, some of the guys at middleweight are over six feet tall. Right? They're tall middleweights. Andy Lee, he's a tall middleweight. How is Andy Lee who's a puncher himself, right, who has cash checks in boxing by using power, who's been behind in some fights, who's been competitive in some fights, the Karlbaugh fight, and then changes the game with power shots. How is offensive Andy Lee going to protect the entire right side of his body against Miguel Cotto? I'm telling you, if Cotto hits you in the kidney area, if he hits you in the rib cage, we've seen men literally just get stopped cold. Right? Look at the Santana fight. So, the, excuse me, the Quintana fight. Carlos Quintana. Right? So my point is simply this. Maybe Cotto is smaller than other middleweights. That doesn't mean he doesn't have an advantage. Folks, look at the history of boxing. How many shorter badass men do you have to see before you realize that the Rocky Marcianos, the Joe Frazers, the Mike Tysons are not only competitive, they're ruling the roost in heavy weight classes. Right? Understand. Marciano weighed in the 180s. Mike Tyson leaves prison. He's in like the 190s. Joe Fraser fights Ali. I believe he weighs 205. Right? You don't have to be heavy at the weight. You can be a guy who weighs in at 154. And if you have the right kind of fight style and you know how to deliver power shots strategically, and you're hard for the other guy to find, and the other guy is accustomed to fighting five, eleven, six-foot guys, and has no clue how to find you as you operate out of a crouch, you have an advantage. In my opinion, Miguel Cotto holds his own against Andy Lee. I believe he holds his own against Janady Golovkin. Right? If he's holding his own against the guys with belts in a division, and if he himself is wearing a belt in the division, then in my opinion, he's competitive in that division. Now, I don't believe, and I know he has a lot of fans out there, but I don't believe Saul Alvarez is competitive at 160. Why? Part of it is Saul Alvarez's size. I want you to research his height. Saul Alvarez is not that tall. Right? Another is the fact that Saul Alvarez has sparred with Golovkin. Google it. Just Google 
Canelo, Alvarez, um, Golovkin, sparring. And you're going to see articles about a trip that Canelo made to Big Bear. Right? And let me just tell you, Big Bear's in the middle of nowhere. Right? This was a special trip by Canelo to Golovkin's camp. The two men entered the ring. Golovkin was too big. And keep in mind, Golovkin physically is much bigger than Canelo. He was too big and he was too strong for Canelo. Understand, you don't have the dynamic you have with Cotto because Cotto moves better than Canelo. So with Cotto, you could be the bigger man, but you could have a problem finding him. Right? And Canelo doesn't have Cotto's timing. In other words, Canelo seems to need to touch you with something before he's throwing big shots. Right? Miguel Cotto out the gate can hit you with a paralyzing left hook. Out the gate. Right? So understand that changes the dynamic of the fight. If I'm fighting Canelo who fights more upright. Canelo fights like Vladimir Klitschko to me. Right? Upright. Nice jab. Lethal left hook. Great straight right hand. But he's upright relying on power. He blows you out with power shots. Cotto, by contrast, is moving around out here. He's bobbing and weaving a bit. Think Joe Fraser with Miguel Cotto. So understand, a Golovkin who, in my opinion, does better against taller fighters. Against a Canelo is going to find a guy who might be physically shorter than him, but who fights tall. In other words, what Golovkin wants is exactly what Canelo brings. A guy who you know where he's going to be, because Canelo's not fast-footed. A guy who doesn't bend at the waist that much. In other words, Golovkin, who likes to operate from outside, knows where Canelo's jaw is. He knows where it is, right? And a guy who you know doesn't have spectacular ring coverage. In other words, Canelo from outside is not going to suddenly jump on me with a big left hook, even though Canelo has a great left hook. But he's not going to spring on me suddenly with a big left hook like Miguel Cotto would. So I believe the Andy Lees of the world, and Andy has a pretty good jab, right? Keep in mind, Andy Lee for years was with Emmanuel Stewart, right? Andy Lee really is a Kronk Jim guy. When you're looking at Andy Lee, think Thomas Hearns, right? Another big puncher, but with a jab and some boxing skills to use length, right? I believe that Andy Lee would be able to keep Canelo at the end of the jab. Right? There's a big height difference, and you would notice the length. Right? Because Canelo would be upright and would be vulnerable to getting hit with a jab. Right? Guys Canelo's size who fight him, they don't stay around the pocket to get hit with a jab because of Canelo's power. But understand, at bigger weights... Right? Bigger weights. You know, where guys are physically bigger. And Andy Lee would be outside the pocket while hitting him with the jab. It would be like Thomas Hearns against Roberto Duran. Right? So while I believe in Andy Lee would be able to destroy Canelo, while I believe a Golovkin would be able to beat Canelo, right? I don't believe those guys would do well against a Cotto who would get underneath, who's too mobile to get hit with a jab, and who'd be moving around the ring, right? Understand, you can't go back to Cotto against Austin Trout, because that fight took place before Cotto got with Freddie Roach. Also, boxing is rock, paper, scissors. The fact that Austin Trout beat Cotto, and he did, I believe I took Trout in that fight here online, the fact that Austin Trout beat Cotto and the fact that Canelo Alvarez officially beat Austin Trout doesn't mean that Canelo beats Cotto. Boxing doesn't work that way. 
styles make fights. You have to look at Cotto style versus Canelo style. So my point is simply this. Just ask yourself, who's the more mobile fighter? Canelo or Miguel Cotto? I would say it's Cotto. Look at Cotto against Delvin Rodriguez. He's moving all over the ring, folks. Right? Cotto is more mobile. He's the harder to find guy. Right? Let me ask you, too. You know, just who's going to be able to surprise the other guy with his power? Right? We've seen fights where Cotto catches Daniel Gill. Look at the first knockdown. That's the great one. Daniel Gill's hand's not even up here. Daniel Gill's fighting a left hook artist. And he is so surprised by the punch that he doesn't even have a hand up. And I'm telling you with Cotto, if you're out of position during a fight, you only have a 50-50 chance of blocking the punch. Right? He starts to throw a left and you're like, is it going to the body? Is it going up top? If you put your hand up here and he hits you in the rib cage, I'm telling you that's devastating. If you've been hitting the rib cage a few times and your ribs are sore and he starts to throw that left hook and you put your hand down here and you get hit up top instead, you can get dropped like Daniel Gill. I think Cotto is the harder matchup because he's harder to find and because his power is so sudden. Right? I understand. Canelo's highlights are mouth-watering. He destroys James Kirkland. I'm sure even members of Kirkland's family were glad to see the referee stop that fight. Right? Even knowing this was the opportunity of a lifetime for James, even knowing James was from Texas and the fight was in Texas, even knowing that Kirkland wanted to continue in the fight, Canelo hit so hard and blew him out by so much that when the ref stopped that fight, he thought, man, you know, this ref is humanitarian. <laughs> He's saving a life, right? Understand, Cotto doesn't fight anything like Kirkland. He's not going to be trying to smother Canelo. He's going to be intermittent. He's not going to be there to get hit with everything Canelo throws. Right? He's going to be bobbing and weaving outside. Right? He has the superior timing. Right? He's going to pick his spots. He's going to be sudden. Right? So, yeah, I'll, I'll accept the charge. I'm guilty as charged in having faded Canelo for a few fights here. Keep in mind, there have been fights where I've taken Canelo. But I believe guys with some mobility, Trout, Everslandy Lara, gave Canelo all he could handle. Right? Don't just look at the wins and losses. Look at the fights. I thought those two guys gave Canelo all he could handle. I thought Floyd Mayweather made Canelo look very bad. Right? Very bad. I think Cotto is mobile. I think Cotto has a big punch. I think Cotto is very experienced. Think about the guys Cotto's been in the ring with, right? Um, you know, Antonio Margarito twice, Shane Mosley, Zab Judah, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Sergio Martinez, Daniel Gill, right? You're talking about a guy at the very experienced part of the experienced spectrum. Right? He's going to view Canelo as an immobile opponent. Right? Who doesn't have his reflexes, who doesn't have his timing, who's not defensively blessed. While I have been a Canelo skeptic, you know what? That's going to continue here. I'm taking Miguel Cotto in this fight. Let me say, too, if Canelo fought Golovkin. 
I take Golovkin. <coughs> Golovkin's already privately been in the ring with Canelo. <coughs> Golovkin, Cotto, that's a different story. That's a tougher fight. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear more from you. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video, especially if you have comments about the Austin Trout Canelo fight to the Canelo people. Please tell me how do you explain the CompuBox numbers, right? What other fights do you know of with CompuBox numbers that unbalanced, where the guy with the better CompuBox numbers lost the decision? Right? Wasn't there also other things going on there, live scoring and stuff like that, that kind of took the air out of the later rounds? Right? Also, with regard to the Arislandi Lara Canelo fight, is there anyone watching this video who did not believe that Lara wins in a 12 round fight at least five of the rounds? Right? If you feel the fight was lopsided in Canelo's favor, please. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Understand, this is really a roundtable discussion, right? It's not about being right or wrong. It's really about sharing perspectives so we can get an edge on the casino, right? The goal is to have it hooked up where you're looking at the fight and you know of the most possible outcomes you're going to make money if either of them happens. Thanks for stopping by.